Hello, scientists. I'm scientist Renee. I'm glad to see you again. Uh, last time I saw you, we were talking about waves, energy, and information, and we're going to keep talking about that today. So today we're going to look at lesson 3.1, investigating amplitude. Amplitude, that word sounds a lot like amplify to me, which is the curriculum that we use. But I don't know if I know what amplitude means yet. So in the first activity, we're going to learn some new information about dolphin communication. So I'm going to read to you the email that we just got from the park superintendent. So two marine scientists from Maya Martinez, park superintendent, subject is observations from Blue Bay. I recently met with another team of scientists who study dolphin communication. They reported some important observations from Blue Bay. They observed that when a mother dolphin and her calf are separated, the mother whistles and her calf swims towards her. The scientists also observed that when a mother dolphin whistles, only her calf swims to her. I would like you to investigate the following question. How does a dolphin calf know which call is his mother's call? Please provide an explanation to answer this question after you investigate further. Thank you. So we got some new information from the superintendent in her latest message. So let's look back. So we know that sound, that there's waves that go through the water. In this one, I see like the mother whistles and the calf swims towards her, but only her calf. It's not like if you go into a mall and you say, mom, sometimes a bunch of moms respond. So how does the baby dolphin know that it's its mother's whistle? And that's what we're going to investigate today. Actually, we're not even going to investigate that today. We're going to investigate that for the whole chapter. So how does that dolphin calf know which call is his mother's call? That's what we're going to try to figure out. And today we're going to investigate just this smaller question, which is why are some sounds different from other sounds? So I want you to take a minute and think what you already know about sound. You know a ton about sound. So what are some different, or what are some ways sounds can be different from one another? Take a second and think. If you've got somebody in the room with you, pause the video and tell them some ways that you know that sounds are different. Now you probably came up with some awesome stuff. One of the biggest things I was thinking about is that sounds can be loud or quiet. So volume is a word for how loud or quiet a sound is. You probably have a loud voice sometimes and a quiet voice sometimes. I know I do. So a sound that is quiet has a low volume. A sound that is loud has a high volume. It's pretty simple. And so we're actually going to play around with that, that whole loud and quiet thing. We're going to use the sim to investigate the volume of some sounds. Now we're going to use a setting called custom sound mode. It's going to let us control and change the sounds that the sim makes. If you have access to the student apps, you are always welcome to investigate this along with me. If you have page 27, if you've got your student investigation notebook, you can turn to it because there are some observations that you can make during it. If you don't have page 47, that's okay too. You can always write down your observations on a piece of paper. So we're actually going to look at those directions first. You're going to see what I'm going to do in the sim. And if you have the student app, you can follow along too. So we're going to go to the sim and we're going to open the custom sound mode. We're going to press play to play a sound. And while the sound is playing, we're going to use the amplitude slider to change the sound. I wonder what that's going to change about it. We're going to observe what happens as we change the sound, and we're going to use our eyes and ears to make our observations. And then we're going to use what we observe to answer these questions. So, let me go to the sound simulation. And I know I'm in custom sound, so if you're in here on your own, sometimes it opens in instruments. Make sure that you go to custom sound. All right. so. I am going to pull, press play in just a moment. I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can see the whole thing. And then I'm going to mess around with the amplitude a little bit and we're going to see what happens. All right, let's give it a shot. Ooh, 
Oh, I saw some interesting stuff happening. I'm going to press play again and let's watch it again. We're going to do it one more time, and this time I'm actually going to move the amplitude slider pretty quickly. We're going to see what we can find out. Ooh, man, I noticed some patterns in there. I bet you did as well. Let's go back to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the amplitude is hmm, larger or smaller when the sound is louder. And then the amplitude is larger or smaller when the sound is quieter. Well, we actually saw that pretty clearly. Like right now, I've got the amplitude set as really small. I can barely hear that. Medium, louder, large, So to me, I see the amplitude is larger when the sound is louder. The amplitude is smaller when the sound is quieter. What happens to the waveform when you change the amplitude? Well, let's go back one more time. So what happens to the waveform? Waveform, I guess that means it's the squiggly line that we're seeing. So I'm gonna press play making the amplitude smaller. Oh, look at that. The wave is getting flatter. And if it's bigger, that wave gets bigger. It's a smaller wave and bigger wave. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, I see a pattern there. What happens to the waveform when I change the amplitude? Well, I saw a bigger amplitude meant like a taller squiggle. And then a smaller amplitude was a smaller squiggle. And so that's talking through what we observed. If you observed the same thing as me, you saw that when I brought the amplitude up, that wave got bigger. When I brought the amplitude down, that wave got smaller. So let's think through that. So this diagram shows a waveform, <clears throat> excuse me, like the one in the sim. So what happened to the waveform as we moved the amplify slider in the sim? Well, we just, we thought about that for our page 47. So it looked like amplitude is how high that wave was. When we made the amplitude higher, the wave got higher. And another thing that I noticed, and you probably noticed too, is the sound got louder. Huh, makes me think that maybe we're coming up to a new understanding here. But before we get there, this is an interesting diagram. Now, I remember a bunch of these dots from one of the readings that we did, where we saw in solids, those dots were close together, in liquid, they were medium, and in gas, they were far apart. So what's new in this diagram? Well, I see a bunch of particles together wherever the wave is the tallest. Do you see anything else? You do, maybe share with somebody in your house. So I see an image of particles with sound energy traveling through them as a wave. And what do I notice about the particles in the position of the wave peaks, the very top part? I'm noticing that where the particles are all lined up together, where they're all grouped up, that's where the wave is the highest. Hmm, it's pretty interesting how that happens. Wonder if we look back at the sim this time, let's look at the particles. Oh yeah. If you follow the very tops of those waves, you can see the particles line up together, just like we saw in that diagram. That's pretty interesting.
And so that leads us to a conclusion. The larger the amplitude of the sound wave, the more particles move. So now we have a vocabulary word. Amplitude, how big or loud a wave is. Okay, so that makes me think amplitude is both how big a wave is and how big it is, is how loud it is. So if the amplitude is greater, the wave is bigger and the sound is louder. I'm gonna think of that like a big noise. If a big noise happens, it's really loud and I can visualize those waves being really tall. Now, based on what we saw in the sim, what do you think the word waveform means? You know why I brought that up is that was kind of a new way, new word for me. So maybe if there's somebody in your house you can talk to, what do you think that means? Or write it down on a piece of paper. So another vocabulary word that we have, waveform, is a curved line that shows the pattern of a wave. Okay, that makes sense. We saw a bunch of curved lines and they showed us the pattern of a wave. Now, we were in that custom sound mode, and you might have noticed at the bottom of the box, there was what was called a wave printout, and that was a record of the wave that we could observe even after the sound stopped playing. Now, if you have your notebook, go to page 48. If you don't, that's okay, you can look at mine and just jot down your answers on a piece of paper. So, let's look at the directions. You're gonna, know, you're gonna use what you know about amplitude, that how big or how loud a wave is, to label and recreate this wave printout from the sim. So I've zoomed in on that page. We're gonna look at the wave printout below. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna label the volume of the sound in each section of the wave form. And we can use the following words as labels, loud, medium, and quiet. So I'm gonna open the custom sound, my sound mode, same place. I'm gonna press play, and then I'm gonna use the amplitude slider again. And I'm gonna to try to match these waves. And then we're gonna update our labels. So just a note, I'm only gonna mess with the amplitude slider. I'm not gonna change the wavelength one. I'm just gonna leave that at medium for now. So now I'm gonna go back to the sim. Let it clear out. And now, let's see. Well, that to me kind of looks like the first one that we saw, and I see that it's set at medium. I'm gonna move it over to small, press play again. Ooh, I can't even hear that. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Oh, interesting. The amplitude is very small, and it was very quiet. Now let's turn it up. Oh wow. Those waveforms are taking up like the whole space. So let's see. We saw this first one with the waves in the middle. And that was when our sound was medium. And then I did little squiggles after that. And that was when our sound was quiet. And then the third thing I did was, whoa, these big giant waveforms, and that's when it was loud. This time I'm gonna do this once more and I'm gonna try to put them in the same order where I have medium, big, little. So let's look at that quickly. So medium seemed about right. So let's press play. Big. And small. All right, so let's look at my picture. We've got medium, big, and small. Well, look at that, medium, big, and small. We did it. So if I'm gonna label these, I'm gonna label this first one, that's a medium amplitude. Second one is a loud amplitude. 
And the last one is a quiet amplitude. So we asked the question at the beginning, why are some sounds different from other sounds? And I bet you can come up with the same conclusion that I'm gonna come up with, which is that when sounds have different amplitudes, different heights, which makes them different loudness levels, we hear sounds with different volumes. So tomorrow, or in our next lesson, we're gonna learn a little bit more about sounds, and we're actually going to do a little home experiment. If you have a straw, just like a drinking straw, you can do this experiment along with me tomorrow. You'll need a straw and a pair of scissors, and you'll also need an adult to make sure that you're safe with the scissors. I'll see you soon.